In this episode, I finished developing the shape of the mole plug for the aft half of the boat, where the geometry is simple. And I started thinking about projecting curves for the forward half of the plug, where the geometry gets complex. Spoiler alert, we'll take a sneak peek at some future photos of the mold development. This is the back half of the boat, of the mold, and you can see that it has a very constant shape. Everything is fairly flat. Every station is almost identical with the exception of the flat on the bottom for the jet. And so I was able to make one pattern, and off that one pattern I made 32 hull shapes. That's 16 pairs. The development of this shape here in the back half is what we call all developable surface. And a developable surface really means um, all the curves or bends are done along one axis or a simple curve, not a compound curve. Um, in other words, you could take a sheet of material and if it's flexible enough, you could bend it into the shape that you want. Um, and up forward, we get into compound curves where we have a curve going in a couple different directions. It's not every day that you get to build a boat, but when you're into the build, it feels like every day you're in this process. Obviously, I have a long ways to go on this project. The end goal is far off and I have to be into it for the long haul. I've had to acquire a long-term view, and I'm not really a patient person by nature. I tend towards instant gratification. So I've thrown myself into these projects that are bigger than me, and I've learned to invest the time and to wait for the finish line, even when the end is not in sight. But meanwhile, I really enjoy the building. I like the process. So we're working on the front half of the boat and we have the challenge now. Everything is coming together. We have the hull sides are coming together into the bow, obviously. We have two hulls. Um, we have the keel coming up and wrapping up into the bow stem. We have the, the, the chine and the chine flat. And the chine is coming around and wrapping into the lower bow. The chime flat is growing and then shrinking. The hull is, the hull bottom is getting a little bit sharper and a little bit sharper and a little bit sharper as we get closer. And, um, <clears throat> and my head spinning with all kinds of um, numbers and, and stuff. And, and you always have this feeling like, wow, am I, am I missing it? Am I missing it? Um, not too worried about it. But we go back and forth between the lossman on the shop floor and the draftsman in the office with uh, doing his drawings or doing the, the rhino. So you saw us up on the lofting table and we projected a few curves, a few curves that we like. Uh, we projected some curves for the upper shear line, so the upper hull coming into the point of the bow. And we know that our um, upper width of each hull is um, 54, 55 inches wide. So it has to come in, at some point in the bow, it has to come in um, 27 inches on each side until we get to our point. <clears throat> so we know we have to go from full width and bring in to 27. Same with the keel. We know the depth of our keel 
and then we know our bow stem needs to come up and we're projecting baselines everywhere. We need some kind of reference to measure in from, to measure up from. Um, everything has to be uh, referenced somehow. Nothing is square, nothing is, um, you know, truly plumb on a boat. However, our baseline and our reference lines are always square and plumb. And so we can project every two feet forward, we can project how far in do we want to come. We can do that a number of ways. Um, Rhino is great. Um, and then on the shop floor, we're also just projecting lines. That's all we're doing. And what I did, we projected some lines that, you know, we got to come in on the shear that 27 inches. I projected a line that I like. Just looked at it. I, I think I like that line. Um, and so then I lofted our projection, and that was up on the on the loft table. And here's my lofting. This is my table of offsets. At zero feet, I've started coming in a quarter inch. At one foot, I started coming in a half inch. And so this is my projection of that curve. Crude, very crude. But at least it gives me a good idea. Oh, I like that one. People ask me, how do you know what, how, what shape to make that? And the answer is, um, you don't know. And we'll get into what is a critical dimension and what is an aesthetic dimension. An artist would say they're both critical, but what is critical for hall performance and what is non-critical for hall performance and simply a projection that looks good. And so every time I design a boat and build a boat or anything that I build, um, initially, I don't like it. There's a lot of projects I don't want to show anybody. I don't like how it looks. I gave it my best, but it wasn't that great. But that experience was huge because now I know what I don't like, and I'll look, keep my eyes open. I, I'm a YouTube junkie. I look at every YouTube I can see, every projection I can see. I'll take a screenshot of that, and I begin to um, see oh, what, why does that look good? And then I climb on board and I'll measure it out. I'll project it out. I'll make a grid on board. Sometimes I have to sneak. Sometimes it's in the middle of the night. But I take a look at what I've seen in the past, keep my eyes open, and I start seeing, oh, that looks good. So, um, kind of fun. Um, but it takes forever. I've got one station, I got station frame number 18 built. That took me three hours today. I've got station frame 20 underway here. I think that'll take me 45 minutes. And I'm gonna try to do 18, 20, 22, and 24. I think I can have those station frames cut today. Um, next couple, I think I can do in a half hour. Um, and then I'm gonna stand those and then I'll start projecting some, some fairing sticks again and see how we do.